Hey, it's Rachel. Let's get inside this supply box and see what you need for visual journals. First, take a look at the supply list that's been sent to you. Look over every single item and um, Google or go to your favorite art supply store and take a look. These are some of the pens and pencils that are my favorites. And I suggest grabbing your favorites and putting them in whatever pencil pouch you have available. I love Posca paint pens. I love uh, Arteza watercolor markers, fine point markers, um, and all kinds of different uh, Japanese calligraphy markers. So pick out your favorites and put them in your pouch. Here's some other things you'll find on the list. These are temper paint sticks. They're made by a couple of different brands. The brand is not important. Paint sticks are a great way to add quick areas of rubbed in color to your page. Um, grab a, make sure you have an eraser handy, a bone folder. You can get any kind of bone folder you want. The uh, chisel Sharpie is important um, for doing things like poetry erasures. Um, you'll want to get a tape runner. This is my favorite tape runner. Having a stamp pad can be really handy. I do suggest getting a set of alphabet stamps. This is a whiteout uh, roller. You can get any kind of whiteout that you can get your hands on. Uhu glue sticks, those are the best. And just a single loop of some kind of hemp cording. Um, or you could get like Irish linen book binding uh, thread. These are some of the alphabet stamps that I have on hand. They're small and portable, and you can get all kinds of different uh, fonts in the craft store. You always want to have packing tape on hand to do tape transfers. And some kind of travel watercolor box. This is my favorite. It comes in different sizes. This is, I think, the medium size box. It has something like tw 24 colors. Um, and it has, you know, the, you can use the lid as a palette. I also suggest uh, one of these brushes that holds water inside of the barrel of the brush and then you squeeze it. Um, that's really handy if you're out and about. But you can always just get a regular brush and have a cup of water nearby. So if you're like me, you might have lots of scraps of interesting pieces of paper. Um, and if you don't, you can start collecting those now. You can use uh, leftover wrapping, wrapping paper. You can have book pages, um, any kind of remnants from other projects, little cutoffs and interesting shapes and colors. These things are so um, important and inspiring when you are journaling. Another strategy is to create a binder for yourself of collage materials that you've cut out. This is my binder um, that I'm working with currently and I've got it like labeled, you know, for different categories of things, landscapes, people. Um, and it helps me when I'm just, I just need some inspiration or I want to grab some disparate elements and put them together into something new. So you can totally bring magazines to a journal class, um, but if you want to do some of the transfer processes, having laser copies of your collage can be um, really handy. You can do solvent transfers, tape transfers, and gel transfers as long as you have a laser copy. Don't forget about book pages, just plain old book pages. Um, you can create wonderful poetry by blacking out some of the words on these pages um, and it can be the driest most boring book that you can think of and still make a wonderful poem here's some more 
fragments and remnants and scraps. Um, if you haven't ever looked at the inside of a business envelope, those are really fascinating patterns. So open up your business envelopes and you can bring those with you too. And of course, bring your paper. You'll need heavyweight mixed media or watercolor paper around 100 to 140 uh, in terms of weight is, is a good, you need a good heavy water absorbent paper. And um, usually I like to work at about nine by 12 is the size. And we're gonna bind these pages uh, together. So go get your supplies. If you have questions, please reach out.